Commissioner Truman Tinsley III with the invocation. Please rise. Heavenly Father, we're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance in the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just for the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. First item is to approve the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Second. Motion. Second. Ms. Murray with a motion. Who had a second? Second. Ms. Ward with a second. All in favor of approval of the agenda, please raise your hand. 7-0. So moving into presentations and delegations, we're going to recognize the 2019 Model Water Tower competition winners, Avery Thurston, Hannah Owens, and the Water Wipers, Anna Perfecto, Maya Ogletree, and Natia Walker. Watershed Protection Specialist, Alex Robinson, will present. Welcome. And happy Thank you. Day to you. Uh, so, 
Good evening, uh, of course. Evening. So just to give you a brief understanding of what this process is that these students go through, as you know that STEM is huge, and more and more we're trying to challenge our students to think in different ways. So this contest, which we've happily done for, I think, five years now, is throughout all the way through Spalding County, so all four middle schools are invited, and this year we had three middle schools participate. Uh, the students are charged with designing a water tower, but they're not just designing a water tower to look like one of the ones that we have here in Griffin. They have to make it so that it works. Is it structurally sound? Does it leak? And then they also have the opportunity to make it look however they wish. So it's a really fantastic way of getting students to think about how you actually need to build something real world wise. So uh, tonight I'm going to introduce two of our students that are our winners and I believe one of them has brought his water tower so he's going to show that off real quick. Uh, so I'm going to introduce to you our first place winner and our second place winner. Avery Tom Thurston, sorry, I almost said your name wrong. Come on, Avery, come on up. And Hannah Owens, mm -hmm. come on, guys, come on up. All right, so Avery is our first place winner, and he has his, brought his water tower here to show to you guys tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you this thing is pretty awesome, it's very light. It's structurally sound. Once you put it up, it stays up really well. Um, but what really makes it important is if it's standing and then it doesn't leak and if it can be filled and drained very quickly. So that's some of the criteria for this competition. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this back. Hannah is actually a second year winner. She won last year as well. So she is, has accepted the challenge over and over again. Sadly, you're in eighth grade, which means you get to go on to ninth grade and do fantastic things in high school, but this is a middle school contest. So I want to introduce you guys to our first and second place winners of the Model Water Tower competition. Please give them a round of applause because these are some fantastic <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexis. We're going to get Avery. I was uh, talking to um, Avery earlier. When I was in fourth grade, I had to build do a, a science fair project that was to build a, a water treatment plant. And so I remember doing that when I was young. And later on, I got my class four water license. So it was kind of funny that I learned how to do water when I was in fourth grade. And later on in life, I had to figure out how to treat the stuff. So. <laughs> Take these lessons, and hopefully one day you may consider the city of Griffin future employment. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Brant, you get a good look at that. Brant, you need a good look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Item two is consider proclamation declaring 2020 to be, be Black History Month. Commissioner Roddy McCord will present the proclamation. If our guests would please come forward to Mr. McCord. What was that? Good evening, everyone. The City of Griffin Board of Commission does hereby proclaim and recognize and celebrate celebrate Black History Month, February 2020. And we are this year presented to Mr. Reginald Watts and the Urban Outreach Association, Griffin, Inc. And Ms. Janet Harmon Waterford Bragg, a Griffin native nurse and first African-American woman to hold a commercial pilot license. And it's signed by our mayor and by our city manager, Mr. Kenneth Smith. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Say a few words, Mr. Watson. Okay, so I can go sit down. Hold on, wait on a little bit. Where are you? I'm going to get in between. I'm 
not going to be long at all. I just want to thank you, Commissioner McCord, for this opportunity, and I want to thank the uh, mayor for um, this proclamation. Man, we don't take this lightly. This is a big honor, and um, I am so happy to receive it. And I'm going to be um, calling you guys and hopefully get one-on-one -on -one meetings so we can talk about Janet Brad. So thank you, Board of Commissioners, and thank you, Griffin. Thank you, Reginald. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here tonight. Move to item three, uh, recognize Jimmy Smith, firefighter EMT, GSAR with Griffin Fire Rescue as the January 2020 Strongest Link Award recipient. Fire Chief Tommy Jones will address. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. If you don't mind, I want to ask the, the gentleman who nominated Jimmy for this award is to be one of our young captains, Brian Brock. I'm going to give him the microphone and let him do the presentation. Yeah. Welcome, Brian. Brian. Hello. Thank you. So, uh, nominated firefighter rescue technician Jimmy Smith for linking the chain for February of 2020 because of the extensive work he's done here of late. Just to back you up into the beginning of his career, Jimmy's been here for about eight and a half years now, through which the time he's achieved his EMT certification as well as his Georgia Search and Rescue uh, Certified Rescue Technician certification. He's a member of the GSAR team, and um, he's also been promoted to the uh, rescue technician position within the fire department and served as officer in charge at many times when we need him to fill that position. He steps up and, and fills the shoes of when the officers are not there. So lately, and the reason I nominated him for this was what he's done in the last probably year or so, six months to a year. So we have a, a new team that's been started that we collaborated with the county on land, air, wilderness search, laws. I'm sure you've all heard of it. So within that, we we want to try to cover every type of rescue involved, including deep water rescue. So Jimmy kind of took the bulls by the horn with that and went and got his certification for public safety diver, rescue diver. So, and now he's the coordinator for the public safety rescue diver, the diver portion of that team. So that took a lot of time, it took a lot of training, it took a lot of, it took a big commitment on his part to do that. And even more impressive was probably about six months ago, uh, the police chief approached Chief Jones about the SWAT team. So they wanted to know if we had anybody interested in being a SWAT medic. Well, Jimmy stepped up, at already being an EMT, went through the training with the SWAT guys. Now, this he, he would come back to the station and tell us the training, and we're like, what? You got gassed. I mean, he, he did all kind of... You know, I mean, it was very extensive training that he went through. It was tough. It was physically demanding, mentally demanding, emotionally, all the full gamut. He also had to, as becoming a member of that team, he had to be qualified. And you all know that. So he had to practice. He went out for hours and hours to the firing range and had to practice with his firearm in order to be qualified because he has to have a level of protection because he's actually on the entry team with the SWAT now. So because of... Everything leading up to that point and what he's done with laws and becoming a SWAT medic, thought it was a perfect opportunity to recognize Jimmy as doing an excellent job and being strong strongest link in the chain for February 2020. It's a great job. Thank you. You want to say anything, Jim? They don't have all nine. <laughs> okay, was there, was there a picture made? Thank you, Jimmy, for your service commitment, and thank you for all of our firefighters and public safety officials for what you do every day to keep us safe and protected. Thank you, all. Appreciate you. Next, we have our financial uh, review financials from December 2019. I don't, and Mr. Marcus Schwab is right here to tell us all about it. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, well, now on to something a little bit more boring, like numbers. So we have before us the cash balance report for December. This is six months into the year. You know, that's just a moving number. It's what we have on hand at the time. Okay. Okay. Looking into the local option sales tax report, any questions on their collections? It's worthy to note that the first six months we broke $2 million on our lost, lost revenue, so that's very impressive. Yes, sir. 
Any questions on the uh, uh, blight program? Sure. Hearing none. Okay. And the interim statements by fund. Revenues and expenditures six months into the year. Everything looks in good shape. Okay. Very good. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. We're going into citizens' comments now. At this time, the mayor opens the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to a concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the rights to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or, or other staff members for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side I'd like to come before the city commission. Yes, sir. If you can please come up to the podium, and if you would please give your name and address for the record. All right. Hello, my name is Jeremiah Matthews. My address is 332 South 12th Street. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, it's my first time being here, but um, I wing it. But um. This is my first time doing this, but yes, I like you. Uh, I guess offered. <laughs> okay, you can, bring, you can present that if you like. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Well, I have a little bit of concern about my billing with the uh, city of Griffin. Uh, I did other methods, tried many things to try to improve the costs and everything and one day I had got a strange bill when I went to go pay before my next payment was due and I was concerned about everybody else billing so I ended up starting a petition to try to get my community and people around me who are also concerned about how their bills being handled. It's, I have nothing, no ill will towards the company or anything of sorts. It just, I try to get a better understanding of how one could, I guess, get out of it. You know, fall in more debt. I had to take time off while I was doing the petition because I walked around house to house talking to people and I had the luxury to actually hear some of their stories, which kind of made me think about not just helping myself, but helping everybody around me. Because I felt like, you know, if I get my problem solved, it wouldn't stop everybody else's. And I just want people to understand that um, it's not easy. And I made a promise to myself that um, I would come up here today and try to um, find some kind of help or seek some guidance, for example. And I hope everybody who have concerns about the billing is look very closely and ask the following question that they should about what goes on in the house. Because I learned that our company department, at the electric department, of course, is out of touch with its community. Because in my old household, when I used to live on Etrich Mill, we probably lived in the house four years, but before that, when we got our first six bills, we was um, living on 118 Etrus Middle Road. Um, we ended up having a septic tank. They were charging a sewage charge, which led me more concerned of today when they gave me that strange bill. I'm pretty sure you saw it was, was 799 And that was in the middle of my bill that I was paying in November, which was strange because the original bill for that was 348 343, I mean, sorry. Um, and it ended up asking questions, which made me distrust them because I had 21 days before my next billing was due. And I just want to bring a little bit of awareness and concern. If I may give you my card, Mr. Matthews. Yes, sir. And then what we can look at doing, if there's that much interest, in possibly getting a town hall meeting together with our electric department folks to discuss issues. So uh, feel free to give me a call later this week. Whenever you'd like. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, Have you been able to speak to anyone on staff about the issues with the light bill? Yes, but I never could get a manager. They always was in a meeting. Okay. Well, give me your address again. 332 South 12th Street. 
the, it's over by Midwest Street. It, it's where it, it's like on the corner, right across from the barber shop. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Can, do we have contact information to so, somebody can reach out? Do we, can you come give, just give us your phone number? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Matthews, phone number. Matthews. Is this a rental property? I <laughs> Thank you. Is there anybody else on my left that might come before the board? Is there anybody on the right side that might come before the board? Please come forward. If you could please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Nolan Fon. Uh, 128 South Hill Street. I'm the owner of Lola Cigar. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hard to begin, but I, I'm a hand roller of cigars. I'm one of two hand rollers in the state of Georgia that actually has this art to hand roll cigars. I've been doing it in the Spalding County for about 15 years. I got a store that I put up in the Spalding County area for about 10 years now. Um, I saw the revitalization of going in the downtown area going on. I brought my cigars in the downtown area. Uh, I'm, 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 it's great that the re revitalization is happening for Griffin. Uh, I want to be part of that. Uh, once I put my cigar shop, I started noticing there were bars opening up. I was interested in trying to put alcohol to complement the cigars that I have. I can't seem to find a way to get myself to have an alcohol license in the city of Griffin. There is a list that the city of Griffin does have to put together where someone can find where they fit in that list. The problem is, I don't think the city of Griffin was ready for someone like me to come with a lounge where people actually sit there and smoke cigars, premium cigars, mm -hmm. not cigars that you would find at a gas station. Um, I bring in a lot of revenue, whether it be the city into the county. People come to buy my cigars because they can't buy them anywhere else. So when they come, they do buy food next door or in all the other places in the city. Uh, they use the gasoline in the area to get to go where, where they're going. I bring people from Alabama, Tennessee, just to smoke my cigars. Um, I don't know where to begin to try and see what the city could do about me getting an alcohol license so that my patrons, when they come, don't have to go outside either on a cold or rainy night just to go get something to drink to have with their cigar. So I'm just looking for a place where I can fit. So we'll get, we'll get with staff and then we have them contact you. All right. Would that be fair? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks. It's better than nothing at this point. <laughs> yes, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being a part of our downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else on my right that would like to come before the board? Belt on the left. We're all good. Okay, we have no public hearings tonight. Uh, consent agenda is item five through nine. We uh, have the minutes of the next meeting of the regular agenda. So we've got consent agenda items five is nine. Do we have a motion to take them all? I'll make a motion. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Truman Tinsley with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. Seven zero. We had a couple of commissioners um, out at the last board of uh, commissioners meeting. Consider the minutes of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners regular meeting on January 28, 2020. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Make, make a motion. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Mr. Brock with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. Five zero two with Mrs. Ward and Mrs. Flowers abstaining. <coughs> Moving to item 11, consider a second reading an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin, Georgia at Chapter 74, Solid Waste, Article 3, Collection of Recyclable Materials. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Mrs. Um, Murray with a motion. Second. Ms. Ward with a second. Are there any questions of Mr. Francis? All in favor, signal to raise your hand. 7-0. Item 12 is considered an ordinance approving the adoption agreement in general <coughs> addendum to the GM EBS Master Defined Benefit Retirement Plan as restated for participation by the City of Griffin, Georgia, effective January 1, 2018. 
Motion approved. Motion approved. Ms. Ward with motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Tinsley. Any questions or discussion with Mr. Whalen? All in favor, signal by raising your hand. 7 0. Item 13 is consider a resolution amending the service delivery strategy to add the word grants to the wastewater and water distribution services as a funding method and authorize the mayor to execute the same. Motion to approve. I second. Right. Mr. Tinsley with a motion, Ms. Murray with a second. Any questions or discussion? Uh, briefly, this doesn't change any of the other stuff that we're working on, the review of it. No, it doesn't. When we were looking through this, the resolution is specific to say that it either has to be amended October of 2022 or whenever we decide it needs to be. So we can do that without having to wait till 2022. Any other questions? All in favor, signal by raise your hand. 7-0. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. Consider an application for a GFA loan for the emergency generation at Steel Ranch Regional Water Treatment Plant in the amount of $3 million for the water <coughs> department and authorize the mayor to execute the same. I'll make a motion. Ms. Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Brock with a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 7-0. And I would like to read something just for the record on that, just for letting folks know that getting a pretty good deal because of the hard work of Brad and his team. This is to improve a planned implement, improvements. Our planned and water wastewater capital improvements plan. GFA has rated this project high and is willing to forgive $750,000 of this $3 million on the principal interest on, on the principal. Interest is currently 1.94% and Griffin is water first community, so our rate will be 0.94% for the duration of the 20 years. That was 1.9. 0.94% right. for the duration of the 20 years. So good job, Dr. Keller. Okay. Item 15 is removed from the table to appoint a member of the planning and zoning board district two by commissioner flowers for a three-year term set to expire 12 31 22 do we have a motion to lift from the table motion mrs flowers with a motion second mr mccord with a second all in favor please signal by raising your hand seven zero the floor is yours Ms. flowers uh appointing to the pnz board william dukes mr william dukes and i'll provide contact information thank you and my understanding is number 16, we need to continue to hold that. Uh, yes, please table item 16 okay. because if staff could provide me with a concise list of what the requirements are to be on there, the time requirements and that, because I explained it, but I need an email format. Thank you. Moving to item 17, consider claim by Thomas Coggins as set forth in any line of notice dated January 15, 2020 from attorney M. Michael Kenny Kendall. I make a motion to deny the claim. Mrs. Murray with a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Do we have a second to deny the claim? Second. Mr. Tinsley with a second. All in favor of denying the claim, please raise your hand. All against. Did you vote? I'm, no, I'm abstaining. Okay. So we have uh, five, one, and two abstentions being listed. That's, that's, that's eight. Four. <laughs> I'm sorry, four, four, one, thank you, sir. Four, one, and two abstentions, Ms. Ward and Ms. Flowers. Item 18, consider a claim by Amber Wright resulting from a motor vehicle collision with a city of Griffin owned vehicle while operated by an employee of Spalding County with the city's permission as set forth in the underlying notice dated January 16, 2020, from attorney Matthew S. Cochran of the Roth firm. Make a motion to deny. Ms. Murray with motion to deny. Second. Ms. Ward with a second. All in favor of the deny, voting to deny it, please raise your hand. I got a quick question. Yes, you know, Say this lady was driving a city vehicle? No, she was driving a Kia, I believe it was. The, the city owned vehicle hit her in the rear. It was being operated at the time by a county employee, apparently. Uh, according to our public works director, uh, the county called up. They had a project in progress. They needed a vehicle because they didn't have one suitable for this project. 
We loaned them the vehicle. One of their employees picked it up on his way to the project site, the job site. He's rear ended her. You, you don't want me to ask if that person was insured by it? Uh, no, the insurance goes with the vehicle. So Burma has the insurance on the vehicle. Mm. Now, the, I think the interesting twist to this, which I don't know that I've seen before in one of these cases, is that under Code Section 3692.3, if one of our employees had been driving a city-owned vehicle in the scope of their employment, they would have statutory immunity from being sued personally. This mm. county employee does not. So he, you know, if a lawsuit is ultimately filed, he may be sued. <laughs> 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 this is what collaboration gives us. So we have a motion by Ms. Murray, a second by Ms. Ward, to deny the claim. All in favor of denying the claim, please raise your hand. <coughs> All against, like saying. 6-1 with Mr. McCord voting against. And that is our meeting for tonight. So Mr. City Manager. Yes, sir. We have the unveiling of our first Adopt the Street program sign on Thursday the 13th at 2 o'clock. That will be at Bandag on Greenbelt Parkway. So we hope as we unveil that one, we'll see more coming later. So that'll be our first one, and hope you can be there. Thursday <coughs> and thir 13th, 13th at, what time? at 2 o'clock on Greenbelt Parkway at Bandag. Do we still have um, availability of roads and areas for All adoption? Of All of them. And how do they? That's the first one. How so do organizations go about applying for? Or to be able to adopt the we, project? We've got an application form. We just need to get it to the responsible party and fill it out. And we'll be glad to do it. Okay. put one in the okay. okay. Okay, and I'm glad to announce that effective on March the 10th, Chad Jacobs will assume the duties as director of our uh, Griffin Development Services Department. Chad has about 17 years in planning and development, most recently with Spalding County, and uh, he's coming over to be with us, effective March the 10th, so we're looking forward to Chad joining our team. Collaboration, right, yes, Cora? That's what collaboration. happened right there. Working on it. More collaboration. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Good Mr. Job. Whalen? I have nothing. Mr. McCord? Uh, I just want to thank the mayor and the board for uh, continuing our celebration of African American or Black History Month here in, our, in the city of Griffin. It is, um, we never take that lightly. Um, thinking about the accomplishments that have been made by African Americans and Blacks. Um, since we arrived, I guess is the, is the way of, of putting it, and it's because of when black people make up 14% or less than 15% of the population of the entire United States, uh, it is because of that word, Ms. Flowers, is here, collaboration, and there have been some sympathetic people who are not <coughs> African Americans to help move this along. So I want to just let the board know that I'm very appreciative that we are continuing in this great tradition and honoring our citizens. And this year is a, is great to honor Ms. Bragg and also the organization, Mr. Watts and his organization. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Murray. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. It's always tough to battle the weather. And uh, Matthew, thank you for coming out tonight. Your passion is evident, and I hope that the board and staff uh, gives you time and that you get some solutions pretty quick on that. Thank you. That's tough to come out for such a situation, and I appreciate you coming. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Ms. Flowers. Okay, so they both stole my comment, but uh, I did want to congratulate you for coming out here for the first time because it is a big deal to come and stand in front of the board, and uh, so kudos to you. You did a really good job. Um, and the second thing is in reading the proclamation for the, the meeting today, there is a lot to be proud about Griffin, but it is those moments when you realize that we have history-making pioneers that come from our small town, um, that there is an extra sense of pride. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there that I am even more proud right now to be a Griffinite. Thank you, Ms. Flowers. Mm. Mr. Brock. Looking to the back of the room, I see a lot of white shirts back there. <laughs> they turned to my back. <laughs> they turned to my back to me. The fire department. We got one of the best fire departments, if not the best, 
<coughs> excuse me, in the state of Georgia. There's very few number ones, and guess what we are? We are number ones, which makes the fire rate the cheapest there is in the state of Georgia, or the most economical is a better word. So thank you all so much for what you do. It's a very, very dangerous job. Tons, there's tons of training day in and day out. And, and I just thank you so much. I just thank this. I'm, I'm proud to be a Griffinite because of the five. Ms. Ward. Um, I too would like to um uh, uh to thank the board for continue for the board for continuing to celebrate with us um, uh, Black History Month um, continuously, and I would like to thank um, Mr. Weiss and the Urban League for um, the role that they've taken on in our city to help advance um, some of the issues and um, the legacies that were set before you. Um, I don't, I think, I, oh, I wanted to. Congratulate the firemen um, for the that one that was had the strongest link for his achievement. I I, I kind of know how hard it is to do all of some all of the stuff that he's done, and I want to congratulate him, him for that. Thank you. I um, want to give a shout out to Alexa Robinson and, and staff whenever we have the opportunity to work with our youth and our future generations. It's exciting to make their minds get going, whether it's the, um, doing the water towers or whether it's the student advisory council. Our, our employees are making a difference in the lives of these young people. And thank you all very much for all you do there. To, Reginald, to Ms. Reginald Watts and the Urban Outreach Association of Griffin, um, we have, I have an open door policy. I'm always available if you ever want to invite me to come hear what your vision and your dreams are uh, or if you want to come see me at my office. Um, the door is open. Feel free to holler at me and appreciate all you do for this community and uh, to this board. It's been a long 30 days between our retreat and Archway retreat, but I think we continue to work together and strong as a team. And hopefully the relationship that we're showing, how we work together, is reflecting on other boards in this community. And hopefully one day it'll be seamless, whether you're in City of Griffin, Spall, or County of the School Board. So it's an honor to work with each of you. With that being said, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? We'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Just to record with a motion, Ms. Flowers with a second. All in favor, please rise. <laughs> Y'all were going to try to get me a...